Um, hello. So I'm going to talk about two things. Um, the first one is uh, Eclipse Foundation. And the second one is um, light to attempt to M implementation at the Eclipse Foundations. So first, uh, as uh, Joaquin said, I'm a software developer for Sierra Wireless. Um, my main work is uh, to implement protocols for machine-to-machine -machine IoT uh, application for the advantage cloud service of Sierra Wireless. And I'm also involved in um, in uh, open source uh, ecosystem, like a um, member of the Apache Foundation, uh, and I'm committer on few projects at the Eclipse Foundation around IoT, like California, Wakama, and also Lation. So first, um, I'm going to give you an overview of what is Eclipse. Um, so Eclipse uh, is a um, quite old uh, open source foundation now. It, were, uh, it was started uh, by IBM as first as an open source project around um, a platform for creating tools uh, like the famous uh, Java IDE. And then they transformed that into a, a, an independent, non-for-profit open source foundation. So everybody can bring their own project to this foundation. Um, and now, as you can see, uh, there is 200 members, companies, and maybe now 300 uh, open source projects. So yes, what is Eclipse? Uh, today, it's a non-for-profit, USA-based uh, foundation. The headquarters is in Canada. There is 20 employees. Uh, uh, it's, um, it created a, a specific open source license called the Eclipse Public License, which is a business-friendly business license with a weak copyleft. It's not like the GPL. It's not viral. You just need to bring back the modification of, your, of the code. You, you change, for example, if you use an EPL library, you just need to bring to bring back the modification of this library, but not your wall applications. Um, but there is also different uh, license uh, for different Eclipse project. Uh, you will see the Lightweight M2M1 are using EPL and EDL. EDL is basically a PSD license without any copyleft. Uh, first, yes, the first Eclipse uh, Foundation was famous for tooling and Java IDE, uh, but now it's moving for, for more cloud IDE, also a lot of C, C++ tooling, um, modeling tools, uh, yes, runtime server components, and also now IoT and machine to machine. So yes, Eclipse is really um, a vendor neutral consortium. The idea is to create a, a sustainable ecosystem for hosting open source projects. So if a company has an open source project and want to open the project to collaboration, uh, it makes a lot of sense to bring it to Eclipse, to bring it to this sustainable ecosystem without um, without one company controlling the project. It's really a framework for running open collaboration, open source projects. So yes, so what you need uh, for um, running an open source project is you need uh, an, infra an infrastructure like um, repository, build system, uh, website, uh, all the IT infrastructure you need, mailing list, uh, Eclipse is providing all of that. Uh, you have also a framework for managing your project, the process, uh, how to take decisions, how to create a release, uh, what you need to include in a release, etc. Uh, you have also a framework for IP management. So yes, yeah, there is a, a set of due diligence and rules to 
manage your project IP. So if you want to include a, a third party library, you need you have access to lawyers and all the services for checking if this library is clean and you can combine it with your project if there is no license or IP issues. And there is a whole marketing and ecosystem development uh, aspect. Uh, there is people doing marketing for the project. Uh, there is some conferences, uh, EclipseCon in US, in Europe, in France, um, and also several events like hackathons and Eclipse Day everywhere in the, in the world. So now uh, Eclipse has this concept of working groups. There is different working group. Uh, what is a working group? It's not a project. It's not an open source project. It's more um, a group uh, about uh, a, one, uh, a space like there is a working group for IoT, one for science, one for uh, automotive. So the idea is to share a place for to try to innovate or to coordinating um, events, marketing, and new idea about this space. And yes, there is a working group called IoT. Uh, previously, the name was where M2M, uh, now it's IoT. Uh, basically, it's, um, it's a working group of different people, uh, companies talking about IoT uh, architecture and project from devices, gateways, server, uh, and transport. But the idea is to promote and to create uh, technology around open source, open standard, and community system. It's not about proprietary technologies. Um, uh, there is several uh, project around IoT at Eclipse. The f there is historically the first one, I think, maybe not. Where are where? Uh, yes, I think it's maybe one of the pre first project. Uh, it's Pao. Um, it's a client implementation for MQTT. It was first created by IBM and Eurotech. Um, there is a project around co-op, of course, with California, and, and also project around lightweight M2M. Uh, you have also frameworks, frameworks for developing IoT applications like Cura, which is a Java framework for developing gateways. Uh, you have one M2M or Etsy smart M2M implementations. Um, you have also home automation solutions like Eclipse Smart Home, which is a gateway for managing home automation appliance. Um, there, is also, uh, there is also Cricket, which is um, from Cisco, which is something for uh, a rule engine for checking the, the, um, the packets going through your networks and create, I don't know, alert rules or actions. Uh, you have more classical industrial uh, project like Eclipse SCADA, which is a SCADA server. And also there is a new project called Vorto from Bosch, which is um, about modeling and models for Internet of Things. Uh, this is a list of the working group members. Uh, it were founded by Eurotech, IBM, and Sierra. And you have now a lot of different members from uh, you have some research institute, you have um, hardware, ma uh, hardware manufacturer, you have software company. Uh, it starts to be huge. Um, you have 17 projects. So you have 17 real open source projects with IoT, uh, IoT implementations. You have no more than 1 million of code, maybe 2 million, maybe. Uh, I think this statistic is from the last year, maybe it's more now. Uh, and we provide also developer sandboxes for testing and learning protocols like MQTT, Co-op, or Lightweight M2M. Um, so yes, this is um, the website, website um, uh, traffic. So it's every year it's growing, growing. You have every year new press release and more and more traffic and more attractions. 
So yes, so that's all for Eclipse. Um, yes, I can take a few questions if somebody have any question about the Eclipse Foundation. No, okay, I can move on. So yes, um, this is the Lishan project. So this is an um, open source lightweight M2M implementation in Java. Uh, the name is coming from this giant Buddha from China. Uh, when we started the project at Sierra, uh, we started it as a um, proof of concept. We wanted to take a look at this protocol and, okay, maybe uh, it's interesting. We need to try to make an implementation and see if we can use it for our device management projects. So uh, my first question is for you. Uh, who is using it directly as a library for, for their own? Uh, lightweight M2M implementation for client or server. Okay, uh, quite a few people. And who just borrowed some code, like copy pasted some TLV parser or whatever? Nobody? Okay. It, it would be fine, it's not a license problem, just. And who used the Lishan standalone server for testing and discovering the protocol? Oh, yeah. Maybe a lot of people, okay. So yes, that's really the idea when we started to make an implementation. Uh, I think uh, only Wakama existed. So yeah, the specification were, well, it's still a draft. So we really discovering the protocol. So we <coughs> wanted to bring that to the public and okay, use it, test it and report bugs and issue. And so we can have a better code and a better implementation for our cloud server. So, well, Lishan um, is a, first is a Java library for implementing lightweight M2M server and clients. It's not a device management server. It's um, a very simple Java library. There is no framework, no Spring, no GB, uh, nothing fancy. A few dependencies uh, from, of course, California and Scandium, but um, also some Apache commands and maybe uh, SLF4G for logging, and that's all, nothing big. And there is also web UI for discovering and testing the protocol. This is really a web UI you can run, test versus your client play or versus uh, lightweight M2M toolkit clients. You can test it, discover how it's working, but it's not a device management protocol. You Basically, you are not able to put that in productions. So, uh, yes, he started in uh, maybe, yes, this, I think it's the first commit on GitHub, which is basically empty, creating a readme. And three, two or three days after we started to create some code, uh, you can look on GitHub if you want. It's really funny because it's really a proof of concept. We started with maybe a few classes around TLV parsing, and then we created the world, uh, the world standalone project, uh, the standalone server after. Uh, the first external contribution uh, were from Bosch, I think. Uh, uh, at Sierra Wireless, we, not, we are not using, for now, we are not using uh, Observe, and Bosch just implemented the Observe and uh, a few other features, so they came as for us free. It's great. Um, and we started a public sandbox, so everybody can test uh, Lishan and Lightweight M2M without the, without the need to install Java and running a server. Um, and yes, and it started to grow. Uh, now there is several contribution and committers on the project. So we decide, we decide to, to push the project to the Eclipse Foundation and uh, in September and someone, well, Zebra Technology pushed a, a big contribution, a client, like we just build a server, they just bring a world client. Uh, in Java, which is great. And then uh, we are in the process of moving the project to Eclipse. But today is still on my private uh, GitHub account. The code is frozen, 
because we are doing the IP diligence for moving to Eclipse. So yes, so who, um, I have a slide on that here. So who is committing on the new Eclipse Lation project? So you have my colleague from Sierra Wireless, you have Bosch, you have Zebra Technology. Um, of course, if anybody want to help, uh, come. And if you bring us good contribution, we will add you to the list of committers. Um, yes, it's still under migration. So it's moving from GitHub to Eclipse. So the code is frozen, but you can still send us code. We are going to do the integration later when the project is imported on Eclipse final Git repository. And yes, we created a new sandbox at Eclipse because the previous sandbox were, were, was running on my um, on on some Sierra Wireless uh, server. Now it's running on an Eclipse server, and um, it's having an IPv6 address. So if you want to test your client with IPv6, you know where to test. Um, so the feature, um, something we didn't test it this week is client initiated bootstrap. So you can provision some object zero and object one on, uh, on, uh, on a bootstrap server and you can trigger the client initiated bootstrap and get the value. Um, you can do registration, deregistration, you can read, write, create object. Uh, with TLV or plain text. And also it's OHGI friendly. If you are using OHGI, it should be easy to integrate it, but it's not mandatory. You are, you are not forced to, to use OHGI for an English. We are supporting DTLS pre-shared key and raw public key. Uh, it's coming from Scandium. And you have this standalone web UI for testing. Uh, the project is split in several modules. So you have the common elements, the common elements core, uh, which is the common elements between the server logic and the client logic. Um, you have the core server logic. Now we have a server Californium because we are trying to split the lightweight M2M implementation and the and the co-op implementation, uh, the idea is to able to bring another co-op implementation or, or maybe to try crazy stuff like running lightweight M2M on top of MQTT or HTTP or whatever. Uh, you have the Lation client. The Lation client is still now um, the Californium code and uh, uh, the co-op code and the lightweight M2M client code in the same project, but we are going to split that in several modules. And if you don't care and you just want to use Lation, you can get this Lation all uh, module, which is the client, the server, the California implementation, and the DTLS implementation in one jar. So um, you take this jar and you are able to run, a, to create a server or a client. You don't have to to understand how we did the split between uh, the lightweight M2M implementation and the co-op implementation. You have an example for the client. is uh, a simple code, uh, creating an object and uh, connecting to a server. You have this Lation standalone, which is a test, uh, as a web server for testing uh, lightweight M2M. You have this bootstrap server. Uh, it's a standalone bootstrap server. Uh, maybe we will merge that back to into the Lation standalone, so we have one test application for testing bootstrap and, and, and device management. And you have a project with tests. And the tests are basically running a client and running a server and making some communication and say, OK, it's working or not. So um, the server is really a simple Java library. Uh, you build it with using Maven. It's based on California Miscandium. Uh, and well, it's moving today because we are still under refactoring for splitting the co-op implementation from the lightweight M2 implementation. Um, this is an example of the server API. Uh, maybe it's a bit small. Um, so you create a, a server builder 
the server builder is a helper for building a server. You have several methods on that for configuring your server. I want to use this co-op implementation. I want to change this um, this this configuration value. Then you 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 call build and you have a lightweight MTM server. On the lightweight MTM server, you can register a listener. So you have uh, an event coming every time a client is registering or deregistering or updating the registration. So you know the client is there and then you can simply, if you want, send a command for writing a value to, to, to the client. For example, here we create a new date uh, for sending the current date to the client. So we write a request to the client, so you, we send it and we wait for the response and we get the response code. It's, well, it's straightforward. If you know how Californium is working, it's not so different. Um, of course, uh, you have a lightweight M2M server, so you have um, so you have um, a, a registry for the clients, for the connected client, and for the security keys. Uh, you have a default implementation relation for. Uh, storing the list of connected clients and the list of security key. Um, this is a really basic implementation in memory for testing and for trying. But if you want to build a, light, a lightweight M2M device management server or app, uh, applicative server, you need to make your own implementation basically uh, using um, a database or whatever uh, behind and not in memory or secure storage for the security key. It's up to you. Um, the client, um, yes, the client is really new. It is still under construction. The API is not stable. Uh, the server API is, well, it's still not stable, but I think for June it's going to be stable. Um, the client, you can create object. Uh, automatically, the client will answer to, to the server request. Um, we have also security support now. Uh, if you want to try it, you just check out the relation client example. It's really simple to use. You just create resources and start your client. It's really simple. So what are the next steps? So first, the, the big step today is uh, migrating the whole project to Eclipse to do the whole IP due diligence and start the new project at Eclipse as Eclipse Lation. Uh, we are in the process. Uh, I don't know how many time it will take. Uh, it's depending on Eclipse lawyer. They need to, to look at the code and say if it's clean or not, it's probably clean. Um, you, we are also working on a DTLS uh, certificate mode for, um, today we are supporting the raw public key mode and PSK. Uh, we, we need this support for SIA wireless mod, modules and, and servers, so we are going to, to do this implementation of certificate mode. Uh, yes, we are still in process of uh, splitting the co-op implementation from the lightweight M2 implementation. Uh, maybe I will make an, ex an experimentation with co-op over TCP. So I will probably do that in into Lation directly, and probably in also in California. Um, yes, the idea is to provide a, um, a stable API for June. Uh, yeah, I think it would be good for the server, uh, maybe not for the client. Um, what is missing today also is JSON format. So if someone wants to work on JSON format, you are welcome. Um, SMS, we are not supporting SMS. If someone wants to work on SMS, please send us an email. And um, device initiated bootstrap is working. Um, but if someone needs server initiated bootstrap, it's really easy. You can do the code yourself, I think, and contribute it back. So if you want to, to help, uh, well, first is to use it and report bugs and, and issues and features and whatever you, you are missing. 
Uh, you can also help us with documentation. You can talk about it in your company. Uh, if your company is interested in Lightweight M2M, you say, hey, there is an open source implementation. Uh, you can take a look or talk around you about that. You can also contribute code. If you want to help, you're welcome. And if you have any question, you can reach the mailing list. It's the main way to contact people involved in the project. Um, it's a friendly mailing list. Don't hesitate to, to send a message. It's public. It's, but if it's a problem, you can send me a, a private email. Um, yes. So yes, um, when we started um, Lesion, we tested it with Wakama. Uh, Wakama was, uh, was created before Lesion. It's a lightweight M2 implementation, but in C. Um, so who knows about Wakama, who is using it? OK, a uh, few people. So who just copy-pasted some code or whatever? Okay, great. Two people. Nice. And um, who tested his implementation with Wakama, but not using it? Okay. Okay, great. So, a lot of people are using Wakama, in fact. Um, it's really interesting because we don't have a lot of feedback on the mailing list or issues today. So it's very difficult for us to know if people are already using it or we are just throwing code in the, on the internet and nobody's care. So Wakama is a C client and server, while the server is, I don't know, for testing, I think. It's not a server for, it's not a real device management server, for example. It's an implementation of Lightweight M2M, of course. It's not a library like a uh, .so or DLL, uh, a shard library you can use uh, in Windows or Linux. It's more uh, a bunch of C and H file you use, you bring them into your project and create your own Lightweight M2M agent or client or whatever. Um, it's not like libcoop. I think libcoop is more uh, a .so style library. Um, you can, the idea of Wakama is you need to bring your own IP stack and DTLS implementation is the whole Lightweight M2M and co-op implementation, but you still need to bring your UDP callback for sending and receiving messages and you need to basically implement your DTLS yourself using, I don't know, OpenSSL or, or tiny DTLS or whatever you want, whatever you, you can afford on your, on your target. So it was started by Intel as LibLightweight M2M. Uh, you can see it's the repository of light, LibLightweight M2M on GitHub is still existing, is stalled. Uh, is stalled because they have moved the development to, to Wakama. Uh, at Eclipse. Uh, yes, the code was imported uh, last year. Uh, who is committed on that? So it's David Navarro from Intel and me. So we are not a lot of people working on that. Uh, if you want to help, uh, you are really welcome. So um, the feature, um, uh, you can register, deregister, uh, update the registration now. Uh, now Wakama automatically tr triggers a registration update when it's needed, uh, depending on the lifetime. Um, you can read, write resources, you can create objects, delete object instances. Uh, you have also TLV and plain text format, no JSON. Uh, and you have observe, uh, observe basic co-op observe. <coughs> So if you look at the code, uh, you have a core directory when you have several files. This is, um, you have the liblightweight m2m.c, which is a basic public uh, function for lightweight m2m. And you have uh, several files, one for uh, registration, one for TLV, one for creating co-op transaction, some for URI pass parsing, uh, one for handling observation. 
Um, the code is really, it's not that big, it's really easy to, to, to take a look. Um, and you have a co-op implementation. What is the co-op implementation for, for Wakama is uh, Erbium from Quantiki, but uh, change for, for, for having the capability of bring your own IP stack and a few modifications for working in the Wakama. Um, so uh, you have also a test client. So the test client is also for testing and also it's the example of how to use Wakama if you want to build your own light like to m agent or client. You need to look at this code for getting started. You have the lightweight MQM client.c, which is creating everything for starting the client. You have a file for every different object, device, firmware, location, security, server, and a test object, which is a, a random uh, object. And you have also the server for testing. Uh, the server is quite simple. You run the server, you have a um, command line uh, interface, so you can say, you can look at the list of client register and send some command back to the client. So um, some code. Uh, yes, it's sorry, it's very small. Um, when you first, you need to create your lightweight internal term object. Uh, you just plug a callbacks into an object. You say for reading devices object, you need to call this callback for writing devices. You need to call this callback for execute, call this callback. Um, yes. And uh, you can add some user data. So basically for handling your, your, own, your own object logic. Uh, then you need to configure the Wakama library. So you, you create the all objects. You put that in your array. You in, uh, initialize the library, you configure the library, you provide um, an endpoint name, and you start it. And when it started, the library will call your callback when, for example, you have a read request, so say, okay, give me the value for, 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 for this resource instance. And then you need to create an active loop. Uh, you need to call. Uh, this function, like to attempt to M step, um, for uh, for calling the library, and then Wakama will look. Okay, I have a, a co-op transaction. Did I need to send um, um, a retry, a co-op retry, or maybe oh, I received this value. I need to to finish my transaction. So you just need to call like to attempt to M step, and it will take care of managing the co-op. Uh, timeouts and 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 everything and receiving the, um, the datagrams and decoding it and and call the good callback. It's really simple. It's, there is no dependency on threads or this kind of stuff. So for for embedded development, it's it's great. You the only uh, the only. The uh, thing which can be a problem for embedded is um, usage of malloc and free. It's not full static allocation library, but except that, so it's really simple. So what's going on Wakama today? Um, not a lot. There is not a lot of activity. Um, I started to to work on that again. Uh, first, I'm working on device initiated bootstrap. Um, you have an example for running Wakama on embed, uh, if you want to check. Um, probably, uh, well, we still need to discuss that on the mailing list, but probably uh, what we want to, to do now is to provide more example, more portage on different platform, like Arduino, whatever. You have also, um, well, there is a question about the server. Do we need to keep the, the code or not? So I'm pretty sure nobody used it except for testing. So we need to take a look. And block transfer. Um, I think someone is working on that. So probably in next month, we will have a block transfer in Wakama. 
So uh, I have a few slides from Bosch. Uh, they made some tests into his Wacker mine to real devices. So the first one is a Spark Core. So Spark Core is an ARM Cortex M3. Um, so you can run Wakama and Tiny DTLS. So with the security, it's taking a good bunch of the flash, but it's working. Uh, it's great. Um, I did it also with a NXP embed uh, <laughs> dev kit. It's working also. Um, this one is a U-Brox uh, embed also um, with the Cortex M3 also. You can run everything also on that. Um, you have the, the room for a few objects, observing everything, working in. And it's fitting inside this, this, this device. Uh, there is also a great uh, port to Arduino. So, uh, you know Arduino is really uh, small, it's an 8-bit MCU uh, with not a lot of flash and not a lot of RAM, it's 8K of RAM, which is not a lot. And Wakame is working on that, so if you have this kind of architecture for your devices, you can take a look at Wakama, it's working. You have probably a few uh, adjustments to do, for example, on Arduino, it's probably impossible to run tiny DTLS, but if you want to run without security, it's possible. So it's a good proof of concept. You have also a Lua binding. Um, it's uh, someone at Sierra Wireless, Simon Bernard, working on that. So if you want to use Wakama, but uh, you don't want to code in C, it's, you can try in Lua. It's very simple. You create, it's a dynamic language. You create your object in big tables and send that to the library. It's, and it's handling everything for you. It's really great, even for testing or prototyping, it's very easy to, 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 to use it because it's dynamic language. And also it's supporting DTLS uh, through a binding to tiny DTLS. So if you want to get started with lightweight M2M in embedded side and you don't want to do C or C++, it can be an option. So thank you. Um, if you have any question, you have my email, or you can contact a different project using the mailing list, or on Twitter, whatever, but it's fine for you. Thank you.